When you think of esports, League of Legends, CSGO, Dota are titles that immediately come to mind for most people. With global leagues, million dollar prize pools, and sold out stadiums, esports is truly hitting its stride with explosive growth. However, it's not just the big names of the industry that have found success. Smaller games have also taken advantage of easily accessible streaming technology and have built dedicated competitive communities and consistent viewership. Oh, come on, somebody stop this guy! Sometimes, games are so good that grassroots communities spring up around them and keep the game alive long after developer support has faded away. In some cases, the developers themselves put in the effort to produce and finance their own line of premier competitions. And other times, events like Twitch Rivals offer the perfect chance to test out competitive formats for more obscure titles. This is the first episode of our new series here at Action Esports, where we explore some of the great esports communities that live on without global leagues, million dollar prize pools, or sold out stadiums. In this episode, we're going to look at a projectile fighting game that has developed a cult following thanks to its retro wave aesthetics, grooving soundtrack, and ridiculously fast gameplay. This is Lethal League Blades. Developed by Team Reptile and released in October of 2018, Lethal League Blaze is the sequel to the original Lethal League. Living inside the larger fighting game genre, Blaze delivers smooth, fast-paced FGC gameplay with a twist on the traditional formula. Instead of beating up your opponent yourself, the game is more like a combination of dodgeball and squash, with the objective being to hit a ball into your opponent as hard as you can to incapacitate them, meaning that Blaze requires incredible technical skill as well as strategy. With such a simple objective, one might fall into the trap of thinking that the game is easy, and in some ways, it is easy to learn the basics. But the different characters, each with their own movesets, stages of varying sizes, and a wealth of strategic options, combine to make Lethal League an exciting competitive game. To give you an idea of the experience that is a Lethal League match, take a look at this amazing Grand Finals from Wednesday Night Fights in October of 2019. I had to lean in there, because I just, I really can't believe <laughs> it. Dockers is still intoxic. Oh, I told you, man. Is he's he that dedicated. confident? He's dedicated? Well, we don't actually know how much he's practiced this. Yeah. And he is quite, he, oh, he's he looks quite experienced. Oh, no, absolutely. He's an excellent toxic player, but it's not oh, gets thrown. working out against a SoCal thrower. The game itself functions like this. There are two players on the stage and one ball. Each player is able to perform three possible moves, hit, bunt, and throw, which creates a sort of rock, paper, scissors scenario. Anytime a player interacts with the ball, it changes to match their color, meaning that it will hit their opponent while leaving themselves unharmed. The goal of the game is to hit your opponents enough times that they become incapacitated. Complete this task and you win a round, win five rounds and you win the set. Hitting is the most common move in Lethal League Blaze and can change the trajectory of the ball depending on how you hit it. Hitting also speeds up the ball with each hit, making it more difficult to keep track of. Bunting allows you to send the ball in one of four directions at a very slow speed or even an arc. Bunting is one of the easiest ways to slow down the tempo of a fight, and hitting a bunted ball gives you extra charge for your super, indicated by the blue meter below your health bar. You can also press and hold your bunt to create what is called a parry. This allows you to stun your opponents if they attempt to bunt or hit off of your parry, which leaves them vulnerable to free hits. Finally, you can throw the ball. This allows you to pitch the ball either down or forwards at a set speed, after which it will behave just like a bunt. But, in line with the RPS nature of the moves, throwing allows you to take control of the opponent's ball when they are executing a parry. So basically, parry beats hit, hit beats throw, and throw beats parry. Understand the basics? Good. Let's get into the competitive scene. In the competitive Lethal League Blaze community, there have been four major LAN events in 2019. The first of which is Wednesday Night Fights, hosted in Santa Ana, California. WNF is one of the staples of fighting game tournaments, and plays host to everything from Street Fighter to Smash to Tekken to DBFZ. Southern California has always been a hub of esports and competition, 
with one of the strongest FGC communities around. To be included as an event at Wednesday Night Fights is a prestigious place to be, and even though Lethal League Blaze is only a side event, the community is continuing to grow with more exposure. Twitter page says that I'm a professional Lethal League Blaze tournament attendee, and I think that's the best way to describe it. <laughs> the reason why I like getting better at it is to play in tournaments against other people. The SoCal bi-weekly event that we have at WNF, it's a great chance for me to go out and play new people and we get this close rivalry with some of the people who I'm still competing with right now. Due to the high level of competition, players from SoCal sometimes develop different play styles from other regions. The so-called SoCal Throw is a name derived from the heavy use of the throw by SoCal players. These players use the move not only to reposition and take control of the ball, but to aggressively snatch the ball from opponents' parries. Top player Scooter was one of the first players to integrate the move into his kit, and is perhaps the most recognizable user of this style. I have dubbed him the SoCal Thrower because he uses uh, techniques in the game and he throws a lot and there's stuff uh, that he does that literally no other player on the planet will ever do. And that happened only because he was there at our local playing the game in that way, learning from people who played in a similar way. The SoCal throw is controversial, especially among veterans of the original game, but its use of the throw mechanic opens up new ways to play the game. If you find yourself competing in Blaze at Wednesday Night Fights, don't be surprised if your parries aren't working out as planned. Out in the American Midwest, Combo Breaker is seen as one of the most important tournaments in Lethal League history. Back in 2015, a tournament was hosted for the original Lethal League at Combo Breaker and was considered to be the epitome of competition for that game. Combo Breaker 2015 is the first live tournament for the first Lethal League, and it was like a really impactful moment for the community then. I think Combo Breaker is still the most impactful because here's this event that has tens of hundreds of other games that people are competing in, and Lethal League is like kind of slotted in there, and that is like something that brings more people in. Both Combo Breaker 2015 and 2019 are examples of this cycle of players. Some in the community feel like there has been a passing of the torch between the original Lethal League players and the newer, younger Blaze community. A games community will naturally change over time, but the effect of this change in smaller communities is a wholly different experience than seeing players from bigger games retire. Many Lethal League players are defined by their styles, molded by their gameplay that's not just hard to replicate, but wholly unique to them. And with each player having a distinct playstyle and not many players in the community, when one of them retires, that means their style is lost, sometimes forever. There might not be a better example of this than Minecraft Steve 278. Okay, yeah, yeah here we go. Grand finals of the Fellows TV Open Circuit number three, Minecraft Steve. Oh Lord. I wonder what he's thinking Latch is going to do to this matchup. Seriously, this is one of the strangest play styles we've seen in Blaze coming out from this Nitro, and here he is, Grand Finals. This guy, nobody had heard of him, he was registering as Nitro, we're like, okay, I guess, like, fine. So I end up casting, like, a match, and uh, so we start seeing Minecraft Steve, he wins his round one, and I'm like, mm, okay, I mean, sure, like, I don't know who he is, but, like, I've never heard of either of the players in that in that initial round one bracket, so that's cool. Minecraft Steve really wanted to get that talk. Oh, oh, oh my god, bro! Oh. Oh. Like, he like runs through the bracket winning, ends up on top eight winner side, and when I finally get to cast him, it is insane because he just basically stood in the corner, down bunted a whole bunch, and then eventually would use Nitro's cuff special to punch his opponent with the ball and then retrieve it back to himself and continue down bunting to build up special. Minecraft Steve decides for one game, he's not gonna play low speed. He's gonna play full high speed. He's going to knock the ball up to like 10,000, 100,000 miles an hour, and he's going to catch these things. And that was the moment that me and everyone else realized this is not some random kid. This is clearly an OG player. And so he proceeded to win that game in styling fashion, immediately go back to down bunting and taunting the next couple of games and take the tournament. I interviewed him, and when I finally got him on microphone, I said, you've just won Fellows TV Open Circuit number three. That's quite a chunk of change. What do you have to say for yourself? And somebody speaking through a voice changer responded with, this is what we've come to. <laughs> you do want to play Minecraft. Dude, do you want to play some Minecraft? I know how to set up a server. Minecraft Steve captivated everyone in the scene and has left his mark on the game for years to come. 
The level of success that he found with his completely unorthodox play is an inspiration to the whole community. Over in Europe, there is Fellow TV's Jawbreaker Tournament, the winner of which earns the opportunity to compete at Stunfest. Veteran player Daiotsu is unanimously considered to be the best European player in Lethal League and has been for a number of years. For him, Stunfest was his first experience getting on stage and playing in front of a live audience. Going to Stunfest, that was a really interesting experience because it, it was a, like a live audience on a stage. That is basically my first LAN experience. I did the first time I've played multiple people like next to each other on LAN. Since the original Lethal League, Daiotsu has earned a reputation for being one of the most technically knowledgeable players in the scene. It can be easy to understate the incredible depth that this game has to offer. Lethal League goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the most complex fighting games in terms of precision and speed. In terms of the skill ceiling of Lethal League, it's not that hard of a game to learn or master, but you just have to understand the core concepts of any fighting game, really positioning, timing, technique, and stuff like that. There's a lot of non-intuitive things that you have to wrap your head around, like the way how you think of the ball in Lethal League, for example, because if you swing your character or if you bunt or grab, you can't actually interact with your opponent at all. You can only interact with them through the ball. So you have to base your entire game plan around that ball. Once it reaches over a certain speed that it can kill you, you have to think of it as a bomb. How am I going to get around this? Am I going to be really safe here? I got to make sure to put out my hitboxes at a really specific point so I don't get hit by a parry. It's just very different, I think, a very different kind of fighting game. The sheer complexity of the game has led to various tools being created to facilitate learning. An example of which is the Dynamic Angle tool, which allows you to see angles at which the ball will bounce for any given attack on any given stage and position. Think about it this way. The game is so hard that guys had to program their own training modes just to keep up. Finally, the last major tournament in 2019 was Heatwave in Arizona. Heatwave is primarily a rival of Aether tournament but it also hosts various side events for other fighting games. Organizers opened up a side event for Lethal League Blaze. Originally capped at 16 players, the SoCal Blaze community caught wind of the tournament and quickly began signing up, forcing tournament organizers to raise the attendance cap. This made Heatwave 3 the biggest LAN event in Blaze's history with 45 players. Biggest so far, that is. He's got the chance. Oh! He still has it! He still he has it! Wake up! Oh my god, he's on the verge of death. Anything can come. They're both tied up. Kill speed! Oh! He teleports in! The signature right there! Come that's it! The oh my takes god. it! Although we've only talked about some of the larger events in this video, there are local tournaments happening all over the world. For example, Japan has a passionate Lethal League Blaze community, and Western players will vouch for their skills any day. Oh. Lethal League Blaze has an amazing community of competitive players that proves there is still room for grassroots competition in the world of stadium esports. The complexity, variability, and speed of the game has all the elements that make us excited about esports. We'd like to thank everyone in the Lethal League community for taking the time to talk to us about the scene. Special thanks to Yin Yin, Team Reptile's community manager, for his amazing work in connecting everyone together. If you like this series, let us know by hitting that like button. And tell us in the comments what obscure games you would like us to check out next. To keep up to date with all the latest gaming news, subscribe to Action Esports and ring the bell to keep up to date with all our videos. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.